On his album, Beauty Behind the Madness, The Weeknd reveals his deal with the devil. But does that story end there or is there more to it? In my last video, I covered how The Weeknd's debut album, Kiss Land, and his sophomore album, Beauty Behind the Madness, were his segue into satanic imagery, themes, and occultic imagery. The three-part series that we covered last time clearly tells the story of The Weeknd engaging in a deal with the devil, getting fame, glory, and power from the devil, trying to get out of it, and then being stuck in this cycle where he's constantly coming back. Even though that story revealed a lot about his deal with the devil and the cultic imagery that was present, the story really doesn't end. And in fact, it cranks up to 11 on his most recent albums. The next album from The Weeknd was Starboy. So Starboy is the third album by The Weeknd released November 25th and 2016 through EXO and distributed by Republic Records. If you remember from the video as well, we talked about that imprint, EXO being on Republic Records and the significance of that. So this is the third album that he's releasing through this imprint for his brand. While not unlike Kiss Land or Beauty Behind the Madness, this is a star-studded project with a ton of features, a ton of really high-profile names, including Lana Del Rey, Kendrick Lamar, Daft Punk, Future, and it was supported overall by seven different singles, Starboy being the lead title single of the entire project. In an interview with Billboard magazine, The Weeknd gives some context onto what the sound of Starboy is really supposed to be like and really what his idea was and inspiration was behind it. So he said that the influences on the album were 50 Cent and Wu-Tang Clan. He said the vibe of Starboy comes from that hip hop culture, that braggadocio from Wu-Tang and 50 Cent, the kind of music I listened to as a kid. Bragging sounds good. I was a teenager when I saw Scarface and even though it was unbelievable, it was kind of cool that Tony Montana could survive all those gunshots and not feel them. So while The Weeknd is saying that this album is about the braggadocio lifestyle and the pleasures of being a star, He's not entirely wrong, right? Like this is a large part of what the album is about, but there's obviously a deeper hidden meaning embedded into the music and the lyrics that we're gonna see right now. In fact, the album continues that story of his transformation and his ascension into the occult as an elite member of their secret society. One thing I'm gonna cover as well, in addition to this album and the music video, is it's also the short film that was released with the project. It's a 12 minute short film and is directed by Grant Singer, the same person who directed the Starboy music video. So just keep that in mind as we go through some of this. So the first thing that we're gonna look at on the Starboy album is the lead title, which is Starboy. Now, what I wanna point out right away is the album name itself being Starboy. We could say that someone is a star boy or that you are a star boy. That's two different things that, you know, you can kind of interpret from that album. But the actual name of the project, Star Boy, is a noun that Weekend is using to describe himself. I know that might seem rudimentary, but it's important to get context on why this language is being used and why things are being presented in the way that they're being presented. It's not to look for every little detail that could be twisted into what I'm trying to uh, communicate here, but it's really significant that he called this project Starboy, and there's also some significance behind the idea of what a star is. So when you think of a star, typically most people associate it with the Hollywood star, five-star general, just that five-point star that you usually see um, in, in most things, right? That five-point star is actually called a pentagram. And really what that is, is it's an ancient pagan symbol used in a lot of different ways. Now, I'm not saying that every time a star or a five-point star is used, it's directly attributed to some sort of pagan ritual or symbolism. Obviously, fans have five blades. Some car spokes might have five, bla uh, five spokes. So uh, the context of everything is really important. It's not just the fact that a symbol of a star is being used. So that five-point star, that pentagram, is commonly connected with Wicca and also Satan worship. If you look into the history of it, Elias Levy is also the person that started associating the pentagram with the Baphomet head, which we see in Satan worship. He was the first person to do that, drawing heavily from Wicca in order to make that connection. What's more, the planet Venus actually makes a pentagram in the sky every eight years. Now, that name Venus, Lucifer, is actually the Latin name of the planet Venus, which is also considered the bright and morning star. Now, if you look in the Bible, we know that Lucifer's name is actually morning star. Lucifer, oh, morning star, have you fallen? And I'll put that Bible scripture on the screen right now. Now, of course, we could do a whole video on that, and I think that could get really deep really quickly. But let's just use that as context to kind of depict why The Weeknd is calling himself Star Boy. Knowing that star and that pentagram, what it represents, and now The Weeknd's calling himself Star Boy. Now again, I'm not drawing lines that aren't there because the cover of Star Boy actually tells a very similar story. 
The symbolism on the cover touches on one of the most important concepts in occultism, the link between Lucifer and the morning star Venus like we covered earlier. In occult symbolism, the lightning bolt represents descent from heavens to earth. For this reason, the symbol is sometimes used to represent Lucifer, who is said to have descended from the kingdom of God to mankind. Now, this is a very common story in Revelation, the book of Revelations in the Bible. It talks about how the dragon fell from the heavens and his tail pulled down a third of the stars from heaven with him. This is obviously, you know, a very close connection to the idea that Lucifer fell and became Satan, became the enemy, the adversary, and pulled down a third of the angels with him to become demons and to rebel against God. Lucifer is also known as the morning star or the light bearer, that same name and that same term being used. That same term has been used since the dawn of time to describe the planet Venus. Venus is esoterically associated with the symbol of the five-pointed star and the pentagram due to that astronomical dance in the sky that I mentioned earlier. So it makes that pentagram shape every eight years in the sky. You can also notice how each column on the cover totals six symbols at the very end. And the cross actually leads into the symbol of a pentagram in the middle section. And again, I wanna reiterate this. It's not a matter of like, oh, there's one thing, there's two things. This is a pattern that we're seeing. So one is calling this album Starboy. Two, we see that the, the single art itself actually indicates that lightning bolt, which is very commonly used for that dissension. We also see the actual cross turning into a star. Every single one of these symbols is carefully considered before it's put on the album cover. Album covers and single covers don't just appear to be, right? There's a lot of thought and care that goes into it and a lot of intention behind what each symbol means and what the, the cover is really trying to communicate. If the name Starboy doesn't already seal the deal on the weekend becoming the son of Lucifer, the morning star, um, the video really seals the deal and takes it all the way up to 11 with the imagery being used here. So the Starboy video begins with the masked man entering the weekend's house and the masked man gets up, comes behind the weekend and suffocates him with the plastic bag. It's very rem reminiscent of what we saw on Tell Your Friends from Beauty Behind the Madness in that video. And when the killer removes his mask, guess what? The same thing that we saw in um, Beauty Behind the Madness, Tell Your Friends. The killer is the weekend. The camera also then kind of focuses on another important symbol in the shot, which is the, the cross pendant hanging around the weekend's neck. So that piece of jewelry really underlines what the spiritual meaning is behind what's happening on screen. Now, someone might say, is the weekend a devout Christian? Well, he just killed somebody on screen, so probably not. Um, and not to mention the actual lyrics that are that the song is, is accompanying this video, right? So I'm gonna put you in the worst mood. My P1 is cleaner than your church shoes. The idea here is that the rewards that you're going to get from making a deal with the devil or selling your soul, as people commonly say, is better than just going to a church, right? Like this idea that what you have, the glam and the riches on earth is better than anything you could get outside of that. He even says that we don't pray for love, we just pray for cars. Not to say that God can't help you get a car, but I don't think that's the implication here. I think what he's really saying is we don't want love, we don't want any of this, we just want the material things that come with fame and success. So very similarly to Tell Your Friends, this video kind of sets this ritualistic tone of death and rebirth. A lot of times you'll see artists, and I'll probably cover this in other videos, they kill themselves or usually die in a video or on stage during a concert or a performance, a highly publicized performance, and then they're reborn as this new and better thing. This is a very common thought and theme through the occult and um, a very esoteric kind of meaning behind it. It makes you think the same way and tell your friends when the weekend's trying to kill his old self, did he kill that that part of himself that was holding him back in order to ascend and become a star boy? You know, these are kind of questions you can't really ask, but looking thematically at it, it's definitely the implication that I take away, that he's killing himself literally in order to advance himself. And you'll kind of see this progress throughout the video. The weekend then passes by a photo of Daft Punk who produced the song. What's interesting is there is a falling star in the background and also a black panther in the image. Now, very similarly to Tell Your Friends, The Hills, um, and uh, Can't Feel My Face, there was that common character who was like the devil character in all three videos. In these videos, we see this black panther accompany him in each one of the videos, which is very interesting, but I think it gets revealed in the short film at the very end. Um, but again, there's this idea of a falling star and the Black Panther, which we're gonna see kind of carried through. The weekend then goes into his bedroom, and of course there's a giant illuminated hanging cross over his bed. Now, again, I don't know that anyone is watching this thinking that he's become a Christian. He tears down the cross and begins to destroy everything in his house. Um, so with that in, in mind, the idea that he's celebrating fame, material possessions, and he's destroying his house all the while using a, a giant glowing red cross, he chants that he's a star boy. 
a term that from what we can see definitely has more than one meaning. After destroying everything in his house, the Wiccan leaves his house and he's followed by a black cat. So again, we have another Wiccan witchcraft kind of tie in there where black cats of course are associated with witchcraft. Um, they were believed to be familiars, which are spirits who aid and protect witches doing magic. If you can think of like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, she always had that black cat around following her. Um, black cats are supposed to be bad luck for that same reason. It's all very, very occultic and esoteric. But when he gets into his car to leave, the black cat suddenly turns into a black panther. And again, we saw that black panther in the painting earlier, and we see it in his other videos as well. So just keep that top of mind, because I think it comes full circle as to what that black panther is. And when we think about it being a familiar spirit, we see that theme carried out. At the end of the video, the cross is laying on top of everything that he destroyed. It's a final shot, and we're essentially led to believe or the confirmation is that the weekend is now a star boy. He has completed his ascension. He's destroyed everything that's been holding him back in the past. He's killed off his old self, and now he's ascended to become this elite, to become this star boy. Now, again, a lot of these themes are carried through the other videos. Um, and the next one we're gonna be looking at, Party Monster, does the exact same thing. And it gets a little bit creepier, if I don't say so myself. I don't know how much more creepy these videos can really get. I mean. It's, it's pretty bad, right? I don't know, when people are watching this, I wonder what their interpretation is when they don't look at it from a biblical worldview, if they're just looking at it for what it is. Because in my opinion, it's not incredibly artistic and it doesn't tie into the song at all if you're just looking at the lyrics. Like the song is a very simple song that a lot of people could relate to. There's nothing um, incredibly deep about what he's saying. There's nothing profound or metaphoric about what he's saying. A lot of what he's saying is very direct with maybe some hidden jabs or hidden meanings in there, but overall it's a very straightforward song, right? But the video has so much occult and really satanic imagery in it that it makes you wonder what the average person is seeing when they actually watch this. Um, it reminds me of a scripture where it talks about how believing that they were wise, they professed to be fools, and that idea of like people think they're so smart but yet these spiritual truths are just flying past them you know spiritual things are spiritually discerned so that might be another another thing to point out is that maybe they can't recognize it because they don't have the holy spirit guiding them and opening their eyes to it but at least people are going to see that it's kind of weird and doesn't connect so that's a start right we can at least kind of chip away at that idea that this is not right something's creepy here something's off about this video so party monster is the single that came right after starboy and though it's described as being a psychedelic intense incredibly visually profound video it has a much deeper occult meaning as we're going to see and a lot of these themes again are recurring we see the black panther for example we see glowing crosses for example and again, it just carries a lot of the same themes that Starboy already had set up. So Party Monster kicks off at the weekend arriving at what seems to be a brothel. And there's a ton of occult and religious symbols all throughout this brothel as he's kind of walking through it. While the weekend Starboy video seems to be about the occult initiation, Party Monster shows the process of him kind of being turned into a monster as we'll see at the very end of this video. And of course that makes him cool, right? Then <laughs> he's a monster and he's very cool. You see this theme, a lot in some of these videos, Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, and Kanye West had a song called Monster as well, where they had like necrophilia, they had um, people, you know, like eating a person right on the spot. Just a lot of kind of weird thing. Even Lady Gaga calls her followers little monsters. So this kind of dehumanizing of people is very common as well. And you, and when you see one of these themes, you usually see a pattern throughout the, the major music industry with these major pop or hip hop icons. So it's not surprising to me that we see the same kind of thing here. So of course the weekend gets in, he's meeting all these different call girls in this brothel. Um, he ends up meeting one that turns into a panther. And of course there's lots of religious symbolism and also the one eye symbolism as well. So if you're not familiar with the one eye symbol, this is something that's commonly attributed to the Illuminati where you have the all seeing eye within a pyramid or within a pyramid shape. Um, we see this on the back of currency as well as where it's kind of, it really extended where the, the eye sees everything. Um, but again, this is something that's commonplace in the weekend's video, so not surprising to see it here. So the video kicks off the weekend driving through the desert in a car, which again seems to be Las Vegas. He arrives at this brothel and then a giant glowing cross leads him to where he should go and ultimately find where these women are. In classic occult reversal, 
you see that the cross actually leads him deeper into the occult and into the other world. In classic occult reversal, the, the cross, which is really a symbol of redemption, a symbol of leading you to the light, leading you out of darkness, leads him darker to this path of the underworld. It takes him deeper. It takes him down the wrong path that he should be taking when really it's meant to be the opposite. The flipping of the cross or the inversion of religious symbols has been used by the occult for years and years and years to do the exact opposite. It's what's called black magic, when you take positive religious symbols and flip them. Just to be clear here, there's no such thing as good magic, so if somebody tells you that white magic is good magic, it's not. But I'm just pointing out that that's a common thing used to take a religious symbol and pervert it for the exact opposite purpose that it was intended for. Once he enters into this brothel or this ranch, the neon kind of feeling gives it a feel of hell. There's like neon fire, the weekend's eyes and the girl's eyes are lighting up as they're looking at one another. And the ubiquitous one eye symbol tells us that the weekend is owned by the occult, uh, the occult elite. Later on in the video, we also see that there's a cake topped with an eyeball and two girls are licking this ice sculpture, which looks to be shaped like Jesus. So a quick close-up kind of tells us that it looks like that classic depiction of Jesus or like a classic depiction of a Jesus piece. Um, but again, this is kind of like a one of those things I can't really confirm 100%, but that's what it seems to be. And it wouldn't surprise me if it is. They have neon eyes. They're kind of these soulless monsters. And what are they gonna participate in, in the most? blasphemous way possible, anything that can pervert religious symbols or religious figures. While The weekend has a lot of different girls that he could choose in this brothel, of course the glowing cross is the one that leads him to the one that he wants to choose. He follows her upstairs, which is kind of like that ascension process. We saw this in the same, that we saw the same kind of thing rather in the Hills video from Beauty Behind the Madness, where once he arrives in this white house, this all white room, he ascends up into this red room where the devil and two other girls are waiting for him. And when I talk about that winding staircase being Masonic imagery, really what I'm talking about is the feeling that this winding staircase leads up in, in, if you know anything about Masonic imagery, the idea of a winding or wrapping staircase is the idea of ascension. You're leading up to spiritual illumination. So in the same way, it looks like this girl is leading the weekend up to a spiritual illumination. There's something called sex magic when people will have sex and there'll be people watching and they'll participate in kind of this ritual. This is kind of previewed in a lot of different films. One film in particular, it showed it really recently. Um, my wife and I were watching it a few months back and we're like, what is this going on? It's supposed to be a comedy film with Issa Rae. And yeah, that exact same thing kind of is jabbed in there with Secret Society. Also, Eyes Wide Shut is another example of this being um, kind of illuminated to the, the general public, this idea of sex magic and people participating in this ritual. So he's leading up the staircase, being led by a cross to this call girl, and they're going inside a room. Once the weekend arrives in the room, the girl's not even there. Weekend is instead confronted by this black panther, this giant cat. So if we circle back, we saw that same black panther in the first video, and we kind of made the connection there that witches and Wiccan usually connect black cats as being familiar spirits. So in a seemingly nonsensical scene, a panther emerges from the TV and has female lips, and then he falls down on the bed and then this girl's in front of him. So what does that kind of mean that he's sleeping with a familiar spirit? He's becoming one with this spirit? It's very reminiscent to me of what we saw in Rihanna's video, Umbrella, of kind of this process of demon possession where there's a sexuality mixed in with it. And he's actually becoming, he's coming into this demon spirit and coming into this familiar spirit from this Black Panther. Another thing I wanna point out as well is there's a common thing practiced in the occult, which is called beta kitten programming. You see this a lot with celebrities where they'll either dress as a cat, be dressed, stylized as a cat, and pretty much they're programmed to be sex slaves more or less and treated like prostitutes. Again, this is kind of peaked in the film Eyes Wide Shut, if you've ever seen that film with Tom Cruise, there's a celebrity, a famous pop star in this in this um, in this secret society. She sleeps with Tom Cruise essentially to get him away from being um, killed, more or less. And as a result, she ends up getting killed because she kind of betrayed what everybody wanted. It's kind of a crazy thing to think about, but. These beta kittens, these celebrities who we think are really popular are literally kind of forced sex slaves. Um, Kesha came out against this producer, Dr. Luke, who was taking advantage of her. And you see a lot of these accusations come up, especially around the Me Too movement. Marilyn Manson recently had four women come forward and say that he was, that he was abusing them consistently for years, even brainwashing them into believing that what he was doing was okay. And now they're recently coming out. This beta kitten programming is very common. I might do a video on that by itself, 
But the idea that they're making such a close reference with women and this cat and this panther really is reminiscent to me of that beta kitten programming as well. At one point in the video, as this thing is kind of progressing, it's getting weirder and weirder. But at one point in the video, they decide, hey, let's go outside and race cars. So they both go outside getting these exotic cars and race. At some point, the weekend pulls over, gets out of his car, and then the other girl that was in the other car literally drives off a cliff and the weekend is watching her. Doesn't express any sort of remorse or anything like that. He just watches her fall and he makes, you know, it makes you ask a lot of questions. Did she not know it was on purpose? Um, did the weekend trick her? Was it an accident? Whatever the cause is, we know that it's the process of him turning into a monster. He's literally watching this person, no matter what it might be, commit suicide, be misdirected, and he has no remorse. And instead he just goes about his way and kind of accepts this sacrifice or accepts what just happened as being something normal, something that's gonna happen. He got to use this woman, he got to take advantage of her, and now she's disposed of. So he really is a party monster. So while Starboy is really about the transition towards that new version of The weekend, Party Monster is about going deeper into the occult and what the process of elevation looks like. I'm not saying that people are committing human sacrifice or anything like that by the conclusion of the video, but it is interesting the process of how he becomes more and more numb to what he's doing. He becomes essentially sleeping and becomes entranced with this familiar spirit, that black panther, that black cat. And then at the end, when this girl dies or is killed, you don't really see a, an inch of remorse from him. And then as we go into the short film later on, the black panther character still is there. So the black panther itself didn't die and a different girl is presented to him. So really that girl that died was inconsequential to him. And that black panther character still exists. We see this kind of symbolism in Hollywood all the time. There's even a film out called Neon Demon where really sexual symbolism, idolatry, depravity, um, gluttony, decadence, this drug and sex fuel decadence, it is not an uncommon thing in Hollywood. They're, they're pushing a lifestyle, they're pushing a message, and they're pushing these ideas into the general public to make them more and more accepted and more and more acceptable. Seeing a video like this 50 years ago, people would have been like, this is terrible, what is going on here? But now we see this video and we consider it art, we consider it fancy, we consider it incredible, right? What he's communicating here and what's being communicated is purely of the occult. Let me make that very clear. This is a very evil, a very, uh, telling story that's being revealed here. And even with the short film, which we're gonna cover, you can see what is actually happening and who's pulling the string in the weekend's career. No surprise that he's gonna be performing at the Super Bowl soon with more eyes on him in the country than probably any other moment in his career. And now here's the chance for him to push his message across, which I'm sure is gonna be deeply satanic and deeply occultic. So now we're gonna get into the short film that kind of came along with Starboy. So some artists, in order to build anticipation for their album, will include a short film to kind of get some more attention for what they're gonna be releasing. In some cases, like Kanye West with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, the short films really look into what's happening in their lives or who's pulling the strings behind the scenes in their career and in their lives. So in some cases, like Kanye West with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, these short films really show you what's going on behind the scenes in their lives and in their careers of who is pulling strings and who's making these decisions. So the same character that we've been encountering the last two videos in Starboy and Party Monster, that Black Panther is now seen at the beginning of this short film for Starboy. What's interesting is that it shows the Black Panther elevated on a pedestal in a white room. It doesn't really say why, but then immediately transitions into the weekend driving a car on a cliff. These are all just really beauty shots. He's driving a really nice car up a cliff. And then eventually he arrives at his destination. What's also interesting is we see the Black Panther running, which kind of indicates in a way that the Black Panther is following him to wherever he's gonna be going, which obviously, you know, the Black Panther by itself can't really follow the weekend. So the weekend arrives at like this secret club, which is kind of tucked away. He puts on a hat, kind of disguises himself, goes into the club and then starts to just kind of scout around looking. You don't really know for what, um, ultimately, he ends up spotting a girl dancing in the middle with the spotlight on her. He goes up to the girl, they start dancing, having a good time, but apparently he catches the attention of somebody who's not a fan of The weekend for whatever reason. And this person just watching him, this guy just watching him, watching him. Um, it cuts to a scene where The weekend's in the bathroom, he's washing his hands, washing his face, and then this guy walks in and comes up from behind The weekend, pulls out a knife, draws his hand back to cut The weekend, stab The weekend. The weekend turns around, puts his hands up, and then all of a sudden the weekend gets covered in blood, blood splattered all over him, and he pauses for a second. Lo and behold, the girl that he was dancing with actually just killed this guy. 
She doesn't have a gun, she doesn't have a knife, nothing like that. She's just covered in blood and the guy's laying there dead. Now mind you, these are like slashes that are kind of going on the weekend. It's not like a gunshot or something or a single splat. It's like splashes of blood, right? Which I think is significant for what it is. So after that, you have no idea how she killed them supposedly. They go back out in the club and then continue dancing. The lights turn red, they continue dancing the night away, still covered in blood, both of them, and they never clean up, they never do anything like that. They're just dancing and dancing and dancing. And then the video ends. At the end of the video, the music's still going on, but we're brought to that same pedestal at the beginning of the video with the Black Panther on it, but now the girl is on it and The weekend is dancing around her. Mind you, they're both covered in blood. This model is not moving, she's staring right at the camera not making a face, anything like that. What that equates to me is that this entire time that we've been watching this Panther, the entire time that was introduced from Starboy to Party Monster, is that yes, this Panther that's been indicated throughout the film is literally a demon or some sort of familiar spirit. And at the end, that, that guy that was gonna kill the weekend, whatever that's supposed to symbolize, she killed him, this panther killed him. And at the end of the video, the weekend is committing himself to her. He's in love with her, the two are one. They've kind of combined. And again, this to me really indicates some sort of level of demon possession or demon relationship because the weekend has kind of submitted to her and this relationship that they have is almost symbiotic, almost sexual in a way. And she just murdered somebody. They're dancing with blood covering them. Nobody seems to notice. So either the blood that's covered is metaphoric or everyone is in on this thing that's kind of happening. But ultimately what it, it says to me is the Black Panther became this woman and this woman is definitely some sort of familiar spirit or demon. So there's a lot that could probably be interpreted from this sequence of events in this video. But I think the ultimate takeaway for me is one that the the, the woman is, a, is that Black Panther and that Black Panther is a familiar spirit, a, a demon. And also that anyone threatening the weakened's position now that he's ascended into this occult elite, now that he's transformed into this person when looking at the entire three videos, nobody can threaten that. And this familiar spirit, this demon, is going to ensure that he stays on top, that he stays in the position of power, and that nobody can take that from him. If you really look at the trajectory of The weekend's career from even 10 years ago, nine years ago, it's been nothing but upward. This guy has blown up and become a worldwide mega star and honestly one of the biggest celebrities in the US when it comes to music. When looking at a Google search trend over the last um, pandemic, few months of the pandemic, The weekend has been popping up multiple times as being the number one search person in all the US for multiple states. It's incredible to see that someone can have so much influence in our country. And when you look at the music that he's putting out and the messages behind it, what's embedded into it, it also makes you realize the power of music and the power of messages being within music. Of course, I anticipate we're gonna see more of this as I dive into After Hours, I expect to see more of it. And you know, it's not gonna be surprising, but it's something we need to become more and more aware of. Again, with the Super Bowl coming up and having more eyes on the nation on him at any point in time, maybe in his whole career, it's definitely a moment to think about what's the message being communicated and what is what is the devil trying to do with this music. I talk to a lot of Christians and oftentimes they'll kind of say, music is music, there's nothing significant about it. But whenever you look at like a competitor, if you're a business, for example, if Amazon starts spending a ton of money on building out a shipping infrastructure, if you're FedEx, you're looking and saying, okay, they want to ship their own packages, they're going to become a threat. If Amazon starts spending a lot of money on AI and understanding machine automation or drones that are going to deliver packages, their competitors need to be aware of that. I make that analogy to say, wherever the devil is spending his most time, his resources, he's investing his demons to do different things, that's where he's going to be really making the biggest moves. So in media, in Hollywood, in music, that's where all this time and energy is going into. In the same way that when we look at th the things that the enemy might be doing in a number of ways with warfare or Christian persecution, we shouldn't turn a blind eye to things like entertainment because that's really where so much money, so much time, so much effort is being spent and so much attention is being devoted to. If the devil can't win your heart over by making you break the commandments of God, he'll slowly chip away at it with this music and with different things that he can get into. There's a quote from one of the, the founding members of the Church of Satan, and he says, everybody has a, an altar to Satan in their house. It's called the TV. That's really profound to me because in the same way, music has become ubiquitous where everybody has access to music with Pandora, Spotify, YouTube. 
and literally the more hands have reached into households across the world when it comes to music than ever before. So when you're thinking about the choice that you make with music or the things that you listen to and watch, really consider that. It's not just music, they're not just lyrics, it's deeper than that. And truthfully, you could be letting things into your life that you're not even aware of simply by the choices of music that you make. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, my name's FLF. I appreciate you guys watching this. If you like this video, be sure to share it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to make sure you're in tune with future videos. I'm trying to do a video every week, trying to be consistent. So uh, be tuned for part three. I'm gonna cover after hours and some of the more recent stuff the weekend's been doing. And uh, yeah, we'll keep a pulse on this as it grows. But thank you so much for your time. God bless and be careful about what you put into your body.